Hi there. Welcome back to Northlight Photographic Workshops, the first coronavirus version. Um, I'm secure up here in the uh, Photostock Workshop in the North Woods of Michigan, and uh, it's very strange. Um, I know that everybody watching this right now is locked home and looking for something to do, and I'm sorry that I haven't gotten back to get doing the videos recently, but like you, I've been watching the news and fretting about things and worrying about my friends and my family and getting stocked up and buying plenty of toilet paper and anyway, uh, don't want to make light of that. Um, it's tough times that we're all living in and so I figured I'd try to get back into the, uh, the videos a little bit here and I was going to do one just short one today just to kind of grease the wheels and um, this one is going to be about masking uh, a negative for printing with platinum and palladium or just about any uh, alternative process but it's part of the uh, Platinum and Palladium um, uh, series that I've been doing. And if you haven't seen that yet, there's a, a, a video that I made um, earlier. Uh, the link's right up about here right now. <clears throat> and it's uh, about making a Platinum and Palladium print. It takes you through step by step. And anyway, in that video, I talk about masking off a print. And I like to make my Platinum and Palladium prints uh, with nice clean edges like this. And the way to do that is to um, First, mask off your negative before you, uh, before you print it. And uh, the way that I do that is by using a, um, a sheet of Ruby Lift. I, I order some Ruby Lift online, and there will be links below to this. Uh, I get mine from Dick Lick. Uh, but I order my Ruby Lift in sheets of, um, I think it's 30 by 40 or 22 by 30 sheets, and I cut it down from there. And I only use thin strips of it at a time, and that's what we're going to do today. Um, so I've got some of the Ruby Lift cut down, and I've got a, a nice negative here from a good friend of mine, Jerry Bezerby. Uh, I'm going to be making a print of his later today, and I needed to mask off the negative in order to print it. So uh, what I like to do uh, is get some tape, just some regular, uh, regular scotch tape, not the, uh, the, not the removable kind, because that tends to lift up, and I like these to be more permanent so that I can print them many times. Um, I need, of course, the Ruby Lift. Um, and again, there'll be a link to that below. Uh, and I need a good negative of which I have of Jerry's here. You need a light table. And uh, this light table here is a light panel. It's a new light table that I have. It's an LED panel. And I use it also for copying my, uh, my film negatives, my, uh, my analog film negatives now. Um, I copy them with a digital camera. And I'll get into that in another video at some point. But uh, anyway, so I have my good negative and I have my ruby lith. And what I like to do is take the ruby lith and cut it into some four strips. I use a nice cutter so that I can get a perfect straight edge. So that gives me four strips there. And then I take, uh, anybody that can't see, I, I got my pajama bottoms on today. It's strange, the whole world is now working in pajamas. Uh, I'm not going to feel bad about it, it's comfortable. Uh, anyway, so once I've got my four strips done, I take it over onto my light table and I have my negative emulsion down on the light table. I like to uh, uh, have enough space to work around the edges. So what I've done is this is a 7x7 seven seven digital negative that I've printed out. And it's printed out on an 8.5x11 sheet of Fixons paper, or Fixons um, material. And I'll have a link to that below as well. Um, I'll get into more about digital negatives. Soon, uh, I'm working up to it. It's, uh, I was working up to it before the world changed here, and now I'm back to working up to it. And uh, it's a little bit more involved, but I'll do, be doing a step-by-step -step version of that using um, Richard Boutwell's Quick Curve DN program. Um, but again, don't want to confuse you. We'll get into that later. We're just working on masking this off. So now I take one of my four strips, and on the light table, on the back, on, on, the, uh, on the film side, not on the emulsion side, I line it up perfectly along the edge with the edge of the negative, like so, and then I hold it into place with my finger, take a piece of tape, and I tape it along the bottom there. And I keep holding it in place, make sure I haven't shifted at all, and I like to take another piece of tape, put it over here. So then, I take, go to a right angle with the, uh, the negative, take another strip of my um, ruby lith, and I do the same as I did before, right along the edge. I'm not worried about making a perfect right angle, right angle as long as I stay with, my, uh, with the edge of my, my negative. So on here, you'll notice that I don't have any more 
um, any more um, film substrate here to, to tape to. So what I like to do is take it over on the edge and I tape it there. And I do the same over here. Now that leaves a little bit of um, play in the, in the, uh, between the negative and the, um, and the ruby lith, but that's okay. I'll show you a way to deal with that later on. It doesn't really matter though, because when you put it into the contact printer, it presses it down um, firmly against the negative and you get a nice blocking of the edge of the border. So then I take, and I take another sheet of the ruby lith and I go right along the edge of my negative, hold it into place, take my tape along the edge, tape along the edge there. And then now I'm down to my last side, go at a right angle once again, take my final strip of lith, ruby lith, hold it into place, and again I have to tape this one on the ends. But here's where I'll show you a little trick of what I've done before uh, in the past successfully is I'll flip that over and now the ruby lith goes over the edge. If you can see this on these cameras, uh, the ruby lith goes over the edge like this. So what I'll do is I'll take another piece and I'll just put it down on that side and that really helps keep that into place. Now over here I've got a very thin margin to work with but I still have enough and I can put a piece of tape down on there. And there you have it. I've got a nice masked off negative to print with. Um, and if you want, you can take and trim off this bit of ruby lith on the side if you need to. Now what I'll do is go into the dark room um, <clears throat> for myself. We'll do this at another time. You've seen that in the, uh, in the, other, um, in the other video about printing a, on the negative. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this into the dark room. I'm going to coat a piece of paper, making sure that I have made four dots up in here and making sure that I can cover the area of the negative with my palladium solution and then I'm going to uh, coat a piece of paper and I'm going to print it. So with that, very easy, masking off, a uh, masking off a negative for printing. Now before I go on, again I say that there's going to be some links below uh, in, the, uh, in, the, in the space below in the video for links to get some ruby lith and to, uh, let's see, what else? I'll, I'll actually leave a link for light panel even though they're not any part of this. It's a really handy tool. They're not terribly expensive and this is a really good tool to use in the dark room and in, the, in your dry work area. Um, let me think if there's anything else I can uh, tell you right now. Uh, again, I'll be working on a digital negative step by step in the future, but I'm also going to do some things while we're all locked down like this. Um, I have the benefit of living in a very rural area and I don't have anybody living near me. Um, my nearest neighbor is a quarter mile away and I haven't seen him in five years, let alone during this pandemic. Um, and there's beach and there's a lot of woods to walk in and that kind of a thing. And what I'm going to do is do a couple of videos also where I'm going to take you on walks out in the woods and take you on walks along the beach, that kind of a thing. The other day on Facebook, I did a live video from my drone feed where I was just flying a drone up over the property here and anything I can do to help out. I know a lot of people are doing things online to uh, help ease the boredom and, you know, here I have this perfect studio to work in and it's been really hard to do that because of all the bad news and things. And as I say, I'm trying to ramp up to that and hopefully I'll give you some ideas of things to do that you can do while you're locked down, that kind of thing. Um, and uh, we'll see what we can do. So anyway, um, I hope you'll give me a thumbs up. Uh, I know it's tough times and uh, perhaps subscribe if you haven't already. One thing I'd like you to do if you've made it this far in the video is to make some comments below. Um, I won't be able to answer them all unless there's only a few of them there, but what I'd really like to know is, you know, who you are, where you are, and how you are, um, how things are going. Uh, it's just one little way to be able to reach out and see what everybody's up to. So um, let's leave it at that. Uh, I hope that you're okay. I hope that you're safe and sound. I hope that you're staying home. Um, I hope that you're healthy. I hope that your friends are healthy, and I hope that all your loved ones, ones are healthy. Um, I'm afraid that we're probably all going to be getting some bad news over the next few weeks and it's going to be very odd for everyone. And uh, anyway, I just hope you all hang in there and you'll check back and uh, I'll see you later. Take care. Bye-bye.